All right, here we go. Here's the giveaway. Maps Resistance. What's that, you say? It's the new Maps program. We designed it for people getting started with resistance training. And then what we did is we included three workouts in that program. Body weight and bands, dumbbells, and barbells and dumbbells. Okay, so if you're watching, you just found us, or you stopped a while ago and you want to get back started, you can get free access to that new Maps program, but you got to do the following. Leave us a comment the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. So it's got to be in that time frame. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If you do all those, and if we pick your comment, we'll notify you. And you'll get free access to the new MAPS program, MAPS Resistance. Now, that's not all. We are running a huge promotion right now. So here's what we did. Because we're releasing MAPS Resistance and we know it's for people getting started, we also included a bunch of free stuff with the launch. Okay, so just to help people out. So here's what's included. You get MAPS resistance, and then for a short period of time, you also get a year access to our private forum. That way you have support if you have any questions. We give you the intuitive nutrition guide to help you with the behavioral aspects of diet. And we included two eBooks written on macronutrients. Macros Explained and Macros Applied. That was written by Jason Phillips. He is the founder of NCI Coaching. So we've included all of that together with the MAPS resistance launch. So if you want to sign up, it's only 77 bucks and you get all that stuff. So if you're interested, head over to mapsresistance.com and then use the code RESIST20 for all of that and the discount. All right, here comes the show. Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I've been doing that to my son and he's, uh, he's I'm trying to get him to do that too. Yeah. You know what? You know, the, the One of the number one questions we get, I'm just telling the audience, you guys know this, that we get especially around the holiday season and then January, right? When everybody really wants to get into fitness. Oh, we got something push. special for you guys today. Yeah. The, one of the number one questions that I, we get from people who already work out, who are already consistent, who already have uh, like a good relationship with fitness is like, how do I get my friends or family members started? Um, and then the other common question is those people themselves will ask us, I've listened to your podcast, or I really want to get in shape. I really want to improve my health. How do I get started? What does that look yeah. like? Because we obviously make the case that if you do it the wrong way, like so many people do, I mean, the statistics show that there's an 80% fail rate in the first year alone. Mm -hmm. Two, year three, year four, it's like 90-something percent, right? So the fail rate is so high because people start the wrong way. So, and so, they're so motivated right now, which yeah. is like, uh, you know, that's that's the point, too, where you really want to make sure that you have the right plan, the right focus established in order to even get to a good place where you can then build upon that. Yep. Well, I, I'm excited about this episode because obviously it was structured with the idea of uh, helping a family member or friend out get started on the right track at the, the first of the year. But really, this is for anybody who was inconsistent the last 30 to 60 days, which happens to a lot of people, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Including myself right now. I've, uh, I've been the most inconsistent since pretty much Halloween uh, now that I have been all year long, which I think that's, I think that's more common than it is not just the holidays start rolling around it gets colder, just interrupts everything. It does. And it's just easier to, ah, I'll get there tomorrow. Oh, I'll do the next yeah. day. And I think the biggest mistake I made most of my fitness career. Um, and I think a lot of people fall into this is when I get back into the swing of things is going right back kind of where I left off. And there's no reason for me to do that. And what does it, what does like the ideal scaling up of a program look like, which just so happens to be what I would recommend to somebody who is also just yeah. starting. Yeah. And I think it's, this is an important point to, point to make that how you get started with your fitness and health journey is so important in the context of how you're going to be able to maintain those results and goals and how, if, whether or not you're going to hit plateaus or get injured or feel pain, the way you get, I would guess, I would actually say that the way you get started will, I could probably predict with over 80% accuracy whether or not someone's going to be able to stay consistent and whether or not they're going to get long-term success. Well, you know what else uh, this brings up? Uh, we get a question all the time too is like if you guys were you know your 20 year old self like how would you do it over again or yeah like if you're starting like a fitness plan how would you like i have definite opinions of how i would have adjusted and done things you know a lot more appropriately for myself to set myself up for the long term totally now, the biggest mistakes that i can think of and let's start with that like the biggest uh you know ch i guess mistakes people make right when they get going and the biggest one i can think of is the programming is inappropriate. And the programming refers to 
the workout itself, right? Um, it's too much. It's it, it's always too much. It's yeah. even too much for the like that. That was my point of bringing that up. Is I, I'm guilty of this, even being a fitness professional, that when I go back into training, uh, overdoing it. When when and I, it's why you hear me on the show all the time talking about my goal is to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. And it's really easy to overshoot that, especially when you're somebody who's motivated to change. Yeah, and, and this isn't just because if you overdo it, you increase your risk of injury. That's true. But also, even if you don't hurt yourself, if you over apply uh, the intensity or the volume, right? That's how long your workouts are or the frequency, how often you work out. Now, don't, even if you don't get injured, you're, you're going to get to your goal much slower because exercise is a stimulus that tells your body to adapt. But if you overwhelm your body with too much stress from the exercise, you're not going to adapt nearly as fast because your body is really mainly concerned with, with healing. Now, someone may ask, what is the right stimulus? If you're just getting started, it's not much. And more than not much is too much and you'll get there slower. So it's really important to understand that the right kind of programming and the right kind of workout will get you there faster. And the wrong kind, which is most workouts, most workouts that are popular on social media or on YouTube or with fitness influencers are inappropriate for somebody uh, getting started. There's also the wrong exercise selection. This is another big one for me because people will do exercises that don't have a ton of value for them. Now, all exercises have some value if they're applied in specific ways for the right person. But oftentimes people do the wrong type. Like I, I watch some of these, these workout plans that are popular and a good 80% of the exercise are so wrong for someone to get started. I mean, they'll sweat and they'll get sore and they'll move, but they're not going to move in the right uh, direction in terms of getting well, results. Well, I can't help but think of like my friends or my family members who they might find a program that they, they'll do from online, but for the most part, they're just going to fall back onto what they know when they walk into the gym. And typically it's like a few things. Uh, and a lot of times it's, it's not the appropriate exercises for them, or they're, they're not trying to expand and, and really learn the, the ones that may, that move the needle the most. Yeah. Now here's a good rule of thumb. Okay. Your workout, and this is true for anybody, whether you're getting started or you're advanced, you should feel more energy and you should feel better, more invigorated, um, sharper at the end of your workout than you did going in. If you finish your workout and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm that killed me. And like, oh, I, I need to sit down or you wasted, you feel exhausted. Um, more often than not, that means you just wait, did way too much for your body. And, and again, it's not going to get you there any faster. Well, uh, to Justin's point, I think that the people go in there uh, just doing what they know. And I think that leads to an, another one of the big mistakes, which is just lacking support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, most people have this idea of, okay, if I, I go in and I exercise, whether that be weights or classes or cardio and eat less, uh, I'll have success with my weight loss goal. And I think that's where they go wrong. They don't know that they don't know. And so they go in with uh, with not enough or no support whatsoever. And I just think that's crucial to the beginning. If you want to lay a solid foundation and make sure you start right is making sure you have the, the right kind of support. Yeah, statistically, even um, when, when we would manage big box gyms, uh, we would look at the, the numbers in terms of uh, how often somebody would use the gym with people who worked with a trainer versus people who didn't. And typically when people work with a trainer, average, they'll work with a trainer between one to two days a week. That's the average. So we would look at how many more days they would come and how consistent and long they would stay as members versus people who didn't work with a trainer. And it was like three to one, it was like three times longer and three times as consistent. And the difference is when you work with a trainer, they are teaching you the right stuff. They're showing you the right technique, but it goes beyond that, right? Not, it also is not having support on the journey so if you look at studies on consistency with exercise and nutrition, when someone does something alone versus when they do, do it with a friend or let's say a spouse, the consistency, the adherence is much higher when you have that kind of support, like a support system, right? It can be really hard to get started and you kind of are alone in this brand new journey. So it also means, do you have the support of, some, of people around you supporting what you're doing, people that can help you stay consistent and kind of, you know, be with you when let's say you go out to eat with them at lunch, they're not going to sit there and pressure you to eat a particular way. 
They're not going to, you know, get on you because you're, you know, working out instead of going out to get drinks, type of stuff. So that kind of support, I think, is also important. I think it's a mistake that people go into a new fitness journey without having that kind of solid support as well. Well, along those lines too is is the nutritional guidance. Um, I think another big mistake is people go in there and they think they know what they should be doing eating wise. And I don't know how many times that I've had to correct a family or a friend who is going in with this idea of, oh yeah, I'm just going to restrict calories and move more. And yes, initially you might see some weight loss from that, of course, because you're moving more and you're eating less, but quickly the body adapts to that. And you're now at this place where you still want to lose 20 or 30 pounds, but you're only eating 1300 to 1500 calories. And now the body is stalled and you don't know what to do. And how you start nutritionally and exercise wise is so important to your long-term success. Well, as, as complicated um, as individualizing a workout or following a good workout program or finding a good workout program can be, it pales in comparison to the complexity and challenges of nutrition. Okay. So if you're trying to improve your health, by the way, there's nothing wrong with, with starting a good exercise program and not looking at your nutrition. Um, everybody starts somewhere. There's nothing wrong with that. However, if you're expecting like body composition changes, getting leaner, noticing uh, big health improvements, and you don't address the nutritional side of things and do that the right way, it's going to be much slower, much harder, and much more frustrating. So the nutrition side is also very important and how you apply that also needs to be appropriate. Okay. So what does that mean? Just like with the workout, you don't jump in and do everything all at once. With nutrition, same thing. You kind of start one step at a time, allow your body to adapt, get your, your behaviors to adapt, get used to the changes because whatever you do to get in shape is probably what you have to do to stay in shape forever. So they have to be lifelong changes. Yeah, and then nutritionally speaking, I mean, it's what it, it's a necessity. It's a life necessity. Every day we have to consume something, right? So mm -hmm. uh, that's the difference between that and then having like this new fitness routine that you're trying to be consistent with. It's so those alterations and those adjustments need to be, you know, not too extreme, and they need to be able to fit and and be similar to what you're doing, but just start really refining that as you go. Now, yeah. these are some of the biggest mistakes. What do you guys see as some of the biggest challenges? for these people that, that oh, are you know, deciding to head into this. One of them, which I think is um, just because people don't, um, they, they lack the knowledge around resistance training. Because if I say resistance or strength training to someone, they immediately think that you need lots of equipment. Yeah, gym yeah. membership. Right? Yeah, like I need lots, I need weights, I need machines, I need to have cables. Like, you know, if I go run, I don't need anything but tennis shoes. First of all, that's false. You can do resistance training with almost no equipment or resistance bands can be used uh, to, for resistance training or strength training. So long as you use resistance in a way to build strength and muscle, then you're doing resistance and strength training. I mean, just body weight. I could do just body weight, especially when you're getting started, mm -hmm. and, they'll pr and they'll produce tremendous results. You don't need equipment. That's the first, I think, the biggest, uh, I guess, challenge for people. Well, I think, too, this is why when back when we were trying to develop a fitness app and like kind of looked at the landscape of what was the most popular and what people were doing the most, they were all running-based or walking-based. Yeah. And th this is just something that people just recognize right away. They don't need a lot of education to get into it and, and just get going going and moving in general. But if you refine that movement and really have a good solid plan where, you know, you're, you're activating your muscles, you're, you're really like uh, going through a strength training program, a resistance program, you're going to benefit so much further. This actually kind of takes me back to like early years as a trainer, when I, I had clients that were like family or friend and they didn't have a lot of money to pay for personal training, but you know, probably once a year they come back around, they want me to get them in shape for something. And actually, one of the first things that I'd have them do just to save them some money is I would write them up like a, a very basic body weight type of little routine for them to follow for a couple of weeks before they actually started yeah. paying me money. And I was like, one, I know that's it's very low risk because they're just doing their body weight, pretty easy for them to figure out. And they'd always be like, no, I want to start the weights right now. I'm going to listen. Let's maximize the time that you have with me. I know sending you this direction right now, you're going to progress. You haven't been doing shit for the last like six right. months. Yeah, you recognize do, that. Yeah, you just doing these body weight exercises, watch how great of results. If we also are, are changing your diet and eating correctly, 
in addition to you sending this this signal, right? This stimulus right now, you're gonna you're gonna build muscle, you're gonna burn body fat, and it's a perfect place for you to start. And then you come see me in about three weeks, and then I can start to ramp that up and, and increase increase the weight. So I love this as a strategy, regardless if you have access to all the equipment in the world or not. It's such a good place for most people to start. Yeah, some of the best exercises actually don't require any equipment. Yep. Which brings me to the next one, which a lot of people this is why they don't even get started because they look at their schedule they look at all the stuff that they uh, you know have they have to do i have the kids i have my job like when am i gonna schedule this in to my life like i don't have the time and i think it's because people have the under they they have the false belief that it requires a lot of time yeah you know like i need to i spend a lot i need to have hours and hours and hours dedicated the, to this in order to make any significant results. That's not true, especially with resistance training. With resistance training, now unless you start to get to advanced levels, I mean, you could do a lot. I could do so much with somebody just getting started with two or three 30 to 45 minute well-planned workouts. I can send the muscle building signal very effectively with just that little amount of time. And in fact, not only will I do it effectively, but oftentimes any more is too much for that person. Was this the number one excuse or obstacle from preventing? Because I feel like yeah. everybody I've ever talked to, it, like time or it's not in my schedule. I just I'll get to it eventually. Like the, that was always like the excuse of why they haven't just started and gotten into their program. It's all it's always time and money. It's always it's always time and money. And honestly, I think as a as a young trainer, I made the mistake of blowing a lot of people out because I thought they needed to be in there dedicated. Like if I was going to have success uh, with coaching them, I needed them five, six days a week so I could burn yeah. the most. Because And really back then, the thought process is I have control of that many hours in their week. So mm -hmm. I knew even if they were fucking up yeah. on their own, I could counter a lot of that by training them hard enough inside the gym. And so I wanted to see everybody at least three to six times inside the gym. And it's so the opposite uh, way of the way I look at things now. It's like, you know what, if I could meet any wherever you're at. So if right. you're not training at all, I'm happy if I can get one to two days a week with you to get you started so I can start to lay, lay a solid well, that's foundation. Why I think you're right. It's every, they, they think they have to do everything at once. Yep. And, and that, again, if, if that's your thought process, like I have to tackle this, I got to get all my nutrition right, I got to make sure I get at least three or four times a week, like it just seems daunting. And so they pull back. Quite yeah, how many, begin, how many people can you get started with resistance training and, and get them great results with three 30-minute workouts or 45 minutes workouts a week? Yeah. It's funny, Doug, when he hired me, he had been working out. He wasn't even a complete beginner from an experience standpoint. And I convinced him that we're only going to work out twice a week. And he's like, all right, I'll trust you. And we got to a 400-pound deadlift with twice a week, right? And, and he got significant results. That's you could crazy. get very, very far doing that kind of stuff. Um, so it, it's not time is not an issue, especially when you first get started. You know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, two or three days a week is plenty when it's it comes go to far. with resistance training, right? Now, the other one that I think that people fear is – uh, just the the lack of of someone there to help them with like the cues and mm -hmm. making sure they do the extra right, which and that's I, a real one, yeah. right? I think that's a, I feel like that's a, a valid very excuse, valid, right? Dude. If you are um, completely foreign to the weight room and you've never trained and you don't know these body weight exercises, you don't know these strength training exercises, and um, someone is telling you go do these things and you know they you've never done it before. I understand the the hesitancy from that point, yep. like the fear of I don't want to hurt myself or I want to make sure I don't, which also goes back to why I said the body weight thing is such a good place to start these beginners is to get them to kind of just moving and moving the right way. But I that's another big uh, one that gets in the way for people. Yeah, starting. I would say the only Achilles heel to resistance training is, and it's also its uh, its hallmark benefit. It's 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 so many different exercises, and they can be applied so differently. So it makes it incredibly individualizable. It makes it applicable to most almost everybody, but that also means there's a lot of potential complexity, right? So it's not like just getting on a treadmill and walking or getting on a stationary bike and riding. There's squats and deadlifts and presses and different ways to do them and curls and press downs and rotation. And so if you don't have that initial coaching, this is why training and coaching can be so valuable. It can be really hard to know what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. So that I see as being a very valid, you know, potential uh, challenge uh, for most people. Um, now, this last one has more to do with the fact that the programming is wrong, which also could be connected to lack of coaching, which is injury, pain, and overtraining. Right? This 
This will stop anybody in their tracks, mm -hmm. but it's so common for people when they get first start, when they first get started. It's like they, oh, I, I started working out, I was feeling good, kind of tweaked my back. Mm -hmm. I had to take a couple weeks off. Boom, momentum's gone. They stop working out. Or my shoulder always bothers me, so I can't do those exercises. Or not even be able to recognize what type of pain it is. You know, if it's if it's just the burning pain uh, that is just part of building muscles uh, and and getting some kind of. Uh, you know, like a hypertrophy style training session where you're getting this pump you never had before. It's yeah. just like, I think it, the unawareness of it and, and also to how to navigate through that when you do get joint pain, when you do get these these things that come up, um, you know, where do I go? How do I alleviate this? And, and how do I change my form or adjust things to make sure this doesn't happen? Well, I would make the case that one of the reasons why, or one of the main reasons why this happens is, is the poor programming is the, I'm following this fitness influencer or my buddy wrote me this workout yeah. or so-and-so does this. Well, this is the workout I did 10 years ago. Yeah. I so I, I think a lot of this stuff happens because I wish I remember, uh, what the, what the, 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 um, they did a thing. I remember when we worked for 24 Hour Fitness, they were talking about the, the number one reasons why uh, people fall off their gym membership. And this was the number one. And I, I want to say the average person fell off within the first four to six weeks. I can't remember exactly what, but I know it was it was relatively quick. It was within mm -hmm. the first month or two that, and, uh, and it was a large percentage of those people that quit, quit because of pain, because yeah. it, it hurt or they hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they, so they stopped coming. And I think just a lot of that, again, is going into it with, with the wrong attitude, going into it with the wrong programming and the wrong intensity. And then it results in the joint pain or hurting your low back or, or just the flat out frustration of you're killing yourself in the gym you're and you're getting you know, out of it. You're getting on the scale every yeah. week and you're just not seeing the return. And you finally, what I felt like most of the people that hired me would say is like, you know, Adam, I just, Fuck it. I would rather eat the damn cookies and not exercise and be lazy and carry the extra two pounds. What's two pounds? <laughs> yeah. I didn't do all this shit just to get two pounds off. And so they get frustrated, they get discouraged, and then you know it's a totally. hard, hard time getting totally. them back in. Let's also talk about the the effects of just overtraining, right? You don't have to have injuries or pain, but you can just over apply intensity, volume, frequency. And what ends up happening? People start to get burnt out. It's like they work super hard. They see some results and they start to feel kind of crappy and, and they start to dread working out and it starts to feel like, oh, this is not fun. It's too much. And it's often because they're just overtrained. Or less dramatic. They just don't see as much of results as they would have seen had they done it right. That's true. Mm -hmm. And that's the trap I think I fell into even being a, a trainer and coach for as long as I did because I... You know, the stubborn side of me that wanted to get right back in the swing of things would try and, you know, I, I cared more about getting right back to where I was benching and squatting versus mm -hmm. why I do all of it, which is for the results. You know, it's mm -hmm. like if I really cared just about the results then I wouldn't be worried about this arbitrary number that I'm moving on the bar. And this just is go, good for regular people, but I'm a trainer. <laughs> it's true, so though. I can accelerate this I mean, process. I know I'm guilty. I don't yeah. know about you guys, but I'm so guilty of this oh, yeah. when yeah. I come back. And so, you know, that, I mean... Yeah, I would still get results. I think that's the part that um, I didn't realize that this was a problem because yeah, I would I would work my way through it. I would still get results, but as I've gotten more experience, I've learned like you know, God, I can I can turn it back on and just barely ease my way in and just slowly ramp up and see great progress week over week with minimal effort combined compared to all right it's january one i'm back yeah. you know and then yeah. just like sweating and killing myself on day one it's like that's stupid that Definitely. Make sense. all right so let's talk about then how people should get started to maximize results minimize pain injuries over training and really maximize the odds that they're going to be able to stay consistent, that this is going to be kind of permanent, not this, what a lot of people experience where they get some results and then they go back to where they were before this up and down that people tend to experience. I think to start with, your best bet is to focus on training your whole body, you know, two to three days a week. That's a great place. It's a good, generally speaking, that's a good place to start for almost everybody when it comes to resistance training. Most people, if you're not doing anything now, really, or you haven't for a while, Two to three days a week, you not only is appropriate because there's lots of different ways to apply exercise within that, but it's probably the best application. And you could get very far with that. I mean, you could actually get very advanced with three days a week. Well, there's two things I really like about that. It keeps you from doing uh, too much on a single muscle group. Mm -hmm. And True. then it also it sets you up for 
if uh, you don't get three days in that gym. So if you end up having a slow start and you only get in the gym twice, or let's say worst case scenario, one time, at least I hit the entire body. Yep. This was a this was something that took a long time for me to register. Also, I was a body part split guy forever. And uh, when I started training full body, it was kind of like this aha moment for myself. Like, dude, of course, you know, because it shit happens. It's inevitable that I'm going to be consistent for a while and then something's going to come up and I'm going to have a rough week. And that mm -hmm. rough week, I might only get in the gym once or twice. Now, running a full body routine, what's great about that is if I only got in once or twice, I still evenly hit yeah. everything on my you body. You get that volume for your entire body that way. That's and, right. And then it, it, yeah, it solves that problem of not being able to make it uh, as consistent as possible out of the gates. Plus, too, you really got to spend time figuring out what your perfect dose is. Like, what what does that look like in terms of, uh, uh, you know, did I do too much? Did I do too little? It's better to do too little because guess what? You could just ramp that up and it's not like a deterrent when you go to work out again. Oh, my God, I, I just I can't. I'm too sore. I, I overdid it. It actually limits you from keep progressing. Yeah, actually, it's easy to like as Justin said, it's easy to move up if you're not doing enough. When you started to do too much, uh, you're now so far behind often that you have to go through this recovery process before you can go back to working out. It's a much yeah. harder- Sets you back. Yes. Not to mention most people double and triple down in that situation. Because they don't know, right? Yeah. They're, oh, I must like, not oh, be doing I gotta enough. do more. I know, I gotta do more. <laughs> you takes you, over, you over apply and then you see your results stall and then your answer yeah, you double is double over to, apply. Yeah, yeah, to over apply even more. That's super common. It, it's so common. This super is also common. what leads to the what we talked about earlier about, I think that's where the injury happens. Yeah. Is you, you already were over applying the intensity and volume that you didn't need to to start. And then when you hit your first plateau, your first answer is to apply, must not be doing enough. apply more volume and more intensity. Yeah. And then this next one, I think is also really important, which is start out by using minimal equipment. Now, why? Why is that important? Because if your workout, as you're getting started, which is the, the most touchy period of whether or not you're going to be consistent, whether or not you're going to be able to get that momentum going and build some discipline, whether or not you're getting things going on the right track. If you're relying on equipment that is only available in your gym or complex exercises that you don't always have access to, then the odds that you'll be consistent start to drop, right? Let's say you don't make it to the gym. Well, I can't work out at all because I, they only have the machine that I use and I don't. my workout doesn't have any exercises or to replace that or whatever. So I think it's important to start out with very basic or minimal equipment with your routine because it just increases the odds that you'll be consistent. And it gets, a, it gets things out of the way, right? Any potential blocks or hurdles, you're moving out of the way. Like I said, I've had that happen before where I'll, I'll help a family member and they'll, because their workout depends on a several machines and they can't go to the gym, well, what, what do I do now? Like, you know, so, but, but if your workout depends on no machines, it doesn't matter, right? Along those lines, I think too, you should you should stick to thirty to forty five minute workouts. Totally. Probably two sets per muscle group. Yep. The full body routine yep. that you're talking about um, is a great place to start. You don't need to be in there for an hour or two hours when you're first getting started. 30, 45 minute workouts, two sets or so per muscle group, I yep. think is is plenty, especially if you're getting in there two to three times a week. That's plenty of volume for the There's average There's a big person. myth uh, that you need to work out much longer. I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. uh, I often have workouts that are about 45 minutes long. I've been working out for decades. Um, and, you know, how do I do that? Well, I mean, at my level, which would be more advanced, my intensity goes up. I'm resting less uh, in between sets. I'm still resting, but not as not as long. I'm doing more challenging exercises. So there's a and resistance training is literally it's imagine a light switch. You got to set that switch on to send the muscle building signal. That's all it is. So if if you send that signal on any more, now it's just taken away from your body's ability to adapt. Right. So 30 to 45 minutes when you first get started is a great place to start. It's a great place to get going. And then again, you can go very far with that. Now, along with that, now I don't, I know we talked about earlier how valuable coaching is now in a perfect world. Um, if it, for anybody who got started with resistance or strength training, they would hire a really good trainer or coach. And yeah. I, I'm going to be honest here. Best case scenario. That's, that's, nothing can replace yeah, that. Nothing, like, can replace that. nothing can replace a really good coach. That's going to train you one-on-one, -on -one, watch your form, design your routine for you, make suggestions, be there, you know, supporting you. Nothing's going to be better than that. Now, the, the challenge of that, of course, is A, finding a good trainer, and B, can I afford it? 
personal training is not cheap. It's not inexpensive. Um, here, I know where we live here in Silicon Valley, we're going to pay about $100 an hour for a decent coach. And even in other places where it's much less expensive, it's still 50 bucks an hour. And for some people, that just doesn't work. Um, and so, you know, what we did is we created a resource and, and this is true now, this side of our business makes us almost no money, but we did this literally because of this, because we are all trainers. We created mind pump TV, which is a YouTube channel that is dedicated to exercise demos, right? So when you do your workout, if you really need, like you want help and how do I do this right? What are the mm -hmm. coaching cues? What to look out for? Look up the exercise on there. And odds are we'll have it on there, especially when you're getting started. Yeah, no, and the way to do that, I've had to do this in my DM, so I may as well do it on the podcast right now. Is like if you literally go to YouTube channel and put in mind pump and then think of any exercise. You name the exercise, we've probably shot it. There's not too many uh, you know, standard movements. Even donkey kickbacks. Yeah, <laughs> they're in there. They're, they're in there too. Uh, but yeah, like Sal's point, I mean, uh, when we first did this, the the podcast, we knew we would be able to uh, in long form, articulate our points that we're trying to make when it comes to exercise and fitness. The YouTube channel was designed to complement the conversation that we have. And then also the mindpumpfree.com. Those things were all really designed to basically help you for free. And if you want to go build your own program, if you want to go figure things out for yourself, we wanted to uh, give you the resources for free there. Then of course we make our money by selling programs. And that's, I mean, cause I'm sure there's a lot of people that are just like myself, mm -hmm. which is like, okay, just <laughs> I'd rather have it all done and organized in one place than have to go search. But th it's there though. When you look at the mind pump TV, when you look at all the episodes that we've done, any question that you could have around, like, what should I be doing for these first couple months of getting started, the, the answer is in there. Yep, totally. Um, which takes me to the next one, which is listen to your body or at l at the least, don't ignore your body. So if you're just getting started and you're starting to feel like crap or you're not moving very well or a joint is starting to hurt or you're feeling like, oh, this doesn't feel good, don't ignore your body. And what a lot of people do when they first get started is they ignore their body because they want to see the scale move, right? Oh, I lost a couple pounds. They feel like crap. They're not sleeping good because the workout is too hard, but they're ignoring that. It's all about the scale. You got to listen to your body because if you work with your body, you'll get there much faster and more consistently. If you ignore your body, your body will win, by the way. This is not a battle that you're going to win. If you're overdoing it and you're ignoring the signs, the stiffness, over soreness, the pain, I don't feel good those signals will get louder and louder and eventually they'll get you to stop working out. Or they ignore those signs and symptoms because they look at this as a temporary uh, goal that they're trying to achieve yeah. and get to. And then it's just going to get easier once I get to this certain place that they've had you know, in their mind of, of how I'm going to get there. So I have to push through. I have to do this by all means necessary. And a lot of times you know, that leads you down a dark path because your body really is – talking to you and, and trying to communicate whether or not you need adequate rest, whether you're not, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it may be too much intensity. Uh, you know, a lot of those other factors, like you have to just be very aware of how your body is responding. Now to that point, so how much, uh, how much content is dedicated to that on mapsmacro.com? I know we built, you built that pillar page out on there yeah. and there's a ton of like free resources on there. How much did you talk about that on there? About you, listening to your body with nutrition? Yeah. There, there's definitely con there's uh, articles on there uh, talking about that. So mapsmacro.com, uh, you know that speaks to the nutrition side. So you can figure out how many calories. And th but these are rough, okay, they're rough estimates, but they're way better than uh, you know running into Just the dark. Just it, yeah. Yeah. So you can get kind of a rough estimate of how many calories your body is probably burning, and then how many calories you should eat if you want to lose weight or gain weight. And then there's lots of articles and blogs connected to that that help you with, you know, food intolerances and behavior stuff. And this is the, like the nutrition guidance that I think right. a lot of people need. But, you know, when we're talking about listening to your body, think of it this way, right? The first thing your body will do, and this is akin to, you know, how we communicate with each other, right? You're trying to get a hold of someone and it's not that urgent. You might send them an email. It's what the body first does, right? It sends you an email, ignore the email, and then you'll get a text, you ignore the text, you get a phone call. I'm not going to answer the phone. Now they're knocking on the door. Before now you know pager's it, bla uh, blast. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that, before you know it, it's your body is l over you while you're in bed screaming at you. Okay, so that's what happens. As you, if you continue to ignore your body, the signals get louder and louder until you absolutely can't ignore them anymore. So this is a very, very important part. And then for the nutrition, 
that's complex. That takes time. So the best advice I can give you now for free is to be patient and start slow. And we've done podcasts dedicated specifically to this process with nutrition, but our maps macro.com page is free and that will help you with the information aspect. Proteins, fats, carbs, calories, that kind of stuff. Let's talk about that a little bit, though, because even uh, I think that we have one of the best macro calculators on the internet uh, that's free for you to use, but even that is it's still um, not perfect, right? I've had people message me, hey, I plugged everything in, I've been following this, and this is what's happening, or I'm not seeing results. And th and I think that's why, and you, you alluded to it, but I think we should expand on it that the, those those calculators, I don't care, ours, anybody's, is not perfect. Now, somebody might experience plugging in, and it is perfect for them. It might align just right, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a, but for the for most people, it's a good place to start. Yeah. It's a general guideline. Yeah, and part. the idea is that you have a place to start, and then based off of these body signals that you're talking yeah. about, what you're seeing, am I putting on more weight on these calories? Am I losing? Am I losing too fast? Am I staying the same? Am I how's my energy levels? And the idea is to kind of figure out, okay, here's where I feel most comfortable. And now, okay, if I want to build muscle, let's add, you know, 250 or so calories a day, maybe bump my protein up a tiny bit. Like you're, it just gives you a baseline. The idea is not for you to follow it. Like it's a rule, like this is where your body is supposed to be. It's some generic guidelines and it's a bunch of formulas that we've put together to get as close as we can to give most people a good starting point. But the answer is not to just follow it blindly. No. And that's why listening to your body is so important. You got to pay attention to those signals and take it slow with the nutrition like you do with the uh, with the workouts and you'll get there you're more likely to get to your goals and more likely to stay there when you finally do get there yeah. now again we're trying to provide answers we're trying to help people get started but the truth is a lot of people watching or listening right now they want things kind of you know planned out for them right. like I, I need it mapped out i'd like it all condensed and put together so that I can just Plug see when to play, do. turn key, let's go. Yes. And so what we've done is we've actually created a new maps program specifically for people like this. So we have programs that are great for beginner beginners, but we didn't have one for people that are maybe a little bit, a little bit better off that really want to get started with resistance training. And we also didn't have like all the support that we're talking about. So here's what we did, right? We created a new maps program called maps resistance. And it's exactly for this person, somebody that's getting started, doesn't have any major movement issues, isn't so deconditioned that they, they got to be very careful when they get started, but they just, they just haven't done resistance training before and they're ready to get started. Or somebody who has in the past and they just yeah. have been off. They haven't done it for a while, just right? Just fell off for a while. Right. right. Or if you're listening and this is your, one of your friends or family members, this would be good for them to get started. Mm -hmm. So what MAPS resistance is, it's, it's exactly that. And then in that, what we did is we actually put three different workouts and all three of those workouts are phased and everything right yeah. so full blueprints but just like tailored to body weight specifically dumbbell specifically and then dumbbells and barbells yes yeah, so you can even progress through so it's like a, it's like you could progress through that with minimal equipment a little bit more equipment and then even uh, more equipment all the workouts include priming exercises to uh, avoid injury they're all designed around this two or three days a week 30 to 45 minutes, uh, all kind of what we're talking about. And then, of course, there's videos in there, yeah. so you click on an exercise. Well, and, and to speak into sort of the accountability piece, there's one feature in here we didn't put on any of our other programs that I I thought was a great addition uh, where actually you could follow along. So beat by beat, you can actually play this either on your TV or on your phone. And so if there's any confusion or you haven't done any sort of the, any of these exercises before, you can just follow along directly and go through the whole workout. Right, right. We also are throwing the forum in there so you have that support and guidance that you're talking about. Today. Yeah, so, so and then of course, as w while we're launching this, we were talking and we're like, okay, we're going to tell people like all the mistakes and all the things they need to do. We need to be able to provide them with a solution for all of this. So the workout portion is taken care of with MAPS resistance, but Adam just said support. And we said, we, what about support? We just talked, we're going to talk about that in the episode. What can we provide for support? Well, we have a private forum that you have to pay for normally to get into. We're throwing that in for free. And what you can do is you can get in there. And if you have a question about anything or, hey, I felt this with this exercise, or I noticed this thing, you go on the forum. We have other trainers in there, other coaches, other people who follow the programs, doctors and then ourselves you can even tag us in there normally that's 97 dollars. we're including that in for free for the first year 
Um, and then we put in more. Go ahead. Yeah, and then we we this is the first time ever that we're doing this, which I'm really excited about because the number one question we get asked all the time is nutrition related, yeah. and we've mm -hmm. stayed away from that. It's the reason why we partnered with NCI is because we wanted a, a a trusted source that would provide that information for us. We know that that's a full time business in itself to help people along those lines. And what we got was for Jason to provide both of his eBooks, which are 97 bucks for those two books that for absolutely free with this program. And it's macros explained and macros applied to yeah. really help somebody figure out what they should be. And so a combination of that with our, our macros.com and all the resources that we have, plus the forum should really help people formulate uh, the ideal nutrition plan. For well, them. there's also the intuitive nutrition guide that we included. That's right. Uh, that, so, and the reason why we did that is so intuitive nutrition guide is much more focused on behaviors and helping you identify and work with behaviors around nutrition. If you've listened to the podcast, you know how important we think that is. And, and of course, the studies uh, back and support that. So that's also in there. And so what we've done is we've put it all together as like the perfect uh, you know bundle or a combination of things that help someone get started, whether it's you Yes. listening or for a all the tools you need just in one spot yes and and this is how we priced it 77 bucks so 77 bucks you get all of that uh access for life except for the form which you get for one year which is included with that and that's pretty much it so you can literally apply all the stuff that we talked about in the episode and you'll be just fine it's going to require a little bit more work a little bit more searching but we also have free tools that can help you like Mind Pump TV, of course, there's the podcast, uh, uh, mapsmacro.com, which can help you with macros. But if you want it all in one place and it's all written out for you with demos, blueprints, and the whole deal, then what you want to do is you want to go to mapsresistance.com. And it's only it's for, it's for a short time. We're not going to offer this forever with all those things, but it's there. And again, it's 77 bucks, um, and you get all of it. So, And I don't think they need a code. Do they, Doug? Is it resist 20? Uh, no, they do not. Uh, well, they do need a code. Yes, it's resist twenty to get the discount. Okay, so resist twenty is the code you want to use, and that's seventy seven dollars for all that stuff. Um, so we hope that'll help. And if you have any questions, of course, you can find us on Instagram and try and DM us. We can't get to everybody, but we try to answer as many people as we can. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and one more place to get free resources, uh, MindPumpFree dot com. There's more free written stuff there that can help you get started as well. So. We wish you luck and we hope you can stay consistent.